Okay. So this is uh, the code that you can get yourself. Uh, I doesn't realize it's MATLAB. Let's just turn it to MATLAB. Okay, a bit of formatting. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate both uh, using MATLAB itself and also using Octave Online. So I'm just going to copy this into a fresh MATLAB file. So let me just hit new script. I'm going to paste this and then see so I'll save it as uh, in the default window. <clears throat> Let's just save it as Newton Raphson EG. All right, Newton Raphson example. So let's save that. Okay, so there's something in here already. Let's just run it, see what we get. Okay, so pull that back on the screen. So I saw this in lectures. Uh, this, this 100 was a bit too long. If I delete that down to 10 and I run this, then um, <clears throat> the, so in lectures I ran this in, in Octave Online. So now the dots are a little bit smaller just because of different formatting, but you get this 0 0.8, 1.04 something, and then it kind of settles down at the answer, which is oh, 1.0298, et cetera, et cetera. So <clears throat> you may have noticed <clears throat> that I actually expanded the number of uh, decimal places here. So there's a command that uh, We'll just for, format short G. Let's see, I'll just run this again. Okay, so this is what we found in lectures, 1.0299. Uh, but as I explained, this is, uh, this is maybe not enough precision. So I could type format uh, long G. And then I run this again. Okay, so I get lots of decimal places. Okay, um, so maybe the last decimal place here is a little bit suspect for rounding, but um, <clears throat> internally MATLAB uses quite a lot of precision, so you're not too concerned that rounding errors are going to affect more than the last one or two decimal places here. Okay, so I want to use this code for solving a different problem. So I'm going to delete this. Um, uh, this comment here because I don't want to solve that problem. I want to solve some other problems. So I'm going to I'm going to have some function equals zero. Uh, so uh, something I need to fix is the fact that x1 is not going to be 0 0.8, um, and my function is not going to be this. So this is my. Let me just try f of x here, and um, this is not going to run. And this is a reminder to myself that it's not going to run so that I should fix this up. Okay. Um, so we want to solve some kind of function. Maybe just leave the iterations at 100. Um, <clears throat> so let's choose, let's choose some polynomial, for instance. Like, can we solve uh, x cubed minus x squared minus x minus 17 equals zero. Can we find, well, to solve this, we'd actually have to find three solutions, um, but we're not necessarily going to want to find all of them. We just want to find at least one. Um, <clears throat> so, well, uh, if I plug one in here, this is going to be give me one, minus one, minus one, minus 17. Yeah, okay, so if I stick two in here, that'll give me eight minus four. If I stick three in here, that'll give me um, 27 minus nine, so that's 18 minus three, which is 15 minus 17. Okay, so let's try three. Three is gonna give me a, a reasonably small output. All right, if I take this to be my function, then plugging three in here gives me something 
uh, what is it? Minus two. So that's reasonably, it's not way off the charts. It's not massively far away from zero. So somewhere between two and three, maybe even 2.5. Let's put 2.5. All right. So I'm literally just making this up as I go. So, so this here is my f. f of x is x cubed minus x squared minus x minus 17. Okay, so one reason why I choose a cubic polynomial here is that I know that a cubic polynomial always has a real root. If I tried, say, a quartic here or something, you know, sort of slightly more exotic, I'm not guaranteed that I know that it's going to have a root. I know this thing has a root. Also, if I stick two in, I get something positive. If I stick three in, I get something negative. And so it has to go through zero at some point. All right. <clears throat> and uh, my random guess is going to be 2.5 is plugged into be roughly close to zero. So I also just, why not calculate the derivative of x? All right. So that should be three times x squared. Uh, I want a bit of space here. Three times x squared minus two x minus one okay and i've written this in proper matlab syntax so i can actually just now go okay, well let me copy that into here uh into something weird with the brackets who cares and then <clears throat> so f of x on top f dash of x on the bottom okay so what do I have to set, right? If I approach this, I took the template, what I changed, I sort of checked this because I turned it back down to 10 and maybe 10 iterations is maybe if, if I pick a bad starting point, 10 iterations is not enough. So let's just go all out. Cycles are cheap. Um, I made a guess here. Oops, let's not do that. That's some formatting stuff you don't want to worry about. Uh, this is just a comment, and I needed to need to use the correct correct f of x and f dashed of x here, which I did. All right. So everything else, the plot x end. This is completely standard. I don't have to worry about this. Okay. So moment of truth. Let's run this. Uh, thinking, oh, something weird happened. Uh, okay, okay, all right. <clears throat> it's not f of x, f of x n. All right, x is a vector. So this was bogus, right? So this is x cubed, right? So this is not actually, right? It should be the current estimate x n. And what I'm doing is I'm feeding that in to get me x n plus one, the new one. So everywhere here where you see an x, it should be x n. This is kind of running off the screen, but that's okay. Uh, all right. Yep. That seems to be everything. Now let's run that. Whoa. Uh, did I check the sign here? This sign is wrong. So. <clears throat> So uh, these, these mistakes are purely, these are not intentional mistakes. I'm just sort of flying by the seat of my pants. Let's pretend I'm a student. So when I look at this plot, something is seriously wrong here, right? Newton's method should converge to something. And the fact it looks like it's, it was converged, you know, it was almost constant at a certain value. And then all of a sudden the value, the, the entries of the vector start running off and this is not the behavior you want to see, right? If you see this behavior, you've done something wrong. What you want is rather the mirror of this. It does something weird. And then the, the, the dots should flatten out and basically be giving roughly constant, the constant in, in value in the y direction. Okay. So this is wrong. So kill that. What it should be, right? Is so this plus sign is wrong. So that should be a minus sign. Um, I think I'll have to fix that in the in the code on my uni too. Whew. All right, <clears throat> so we'll do that. Ah, so the reason that was a plus was because there was uh, the example we ran through in lectures. 
it turned out to be a plus because one of f and f dash so f thing f dash had a, a overall minus sign so it turned the negative to a positive okay so this is just diagnostic here so all right let's run that oh okay that's off on the other window on the other screen so surprise beautiful this is what we like to see so maybe we had some value 2.5 that up to 3.3 .3 and down to 3.1 and we're like, yeah, you know, somewhere around, like I said, somewhere between two and three ish, somewhere in that region, I thought was a reasonable guess uh, for a, a zero or a root. And okay, it looks something close to 3.1, just looking at the, the plot. Now look at my output. Okay, my answer, and this is to lots of decimal place accuracy here 3.0962498, etc., etc. So this value here is my approximation for the solution, well, the A solution to the equation x cubed minus x squared minus x minus 17 equals zero. So let me in fact try this. All right, so take that value and I'll take, uh, actually what I can do, this, this, this number here is stored in the variable ANS answer. So what I can do is use that directly. So answer cubed minus answer squared minus answer minus 17. Hit return. Okay. <clears throat> so that's roughly 7 times 10 to the minus 15, right? That's pretty tiny. So that's very close to zero. So at least to, um, let's say, 13 decimal places, the output of putting in my estimate is, you know, I put my estimate into the function and the output is zero, correct, within 13 decimal places. Okay, so this has got to be, this, this answer here has got to be pretty close to the zero. Um, cool. All right. Um, Okay, so maybe one other thing. All right, this is this this enormous, you know, <clears throat> hundred entry, um, you know, checking. Well, it's okay. It's pretty constant. So we can actually pull this n max down. I'm just going to have a look. I could try down to ten because, right, when I look here, look at ten on the x-axis. So this is the tenth entry, you know, the tenth estimate. I run up by that point it looks roughly constant so i will try that let's just run it all right actually okay look at the plot okay so there's a tiny little dot down here at 2.5 then one up at somewhere around 3.3 and then it's kind of settling down so <clears throat> if we look at the actual numerical output it's 3.0962498068 4087 which is identical to the previous estimate where i used 100 iterations um, in this in this cycle here uh, technically 99 but you know 90, 100 estimates starting from my personal first guess 2.5 um all right so it might be interesting well one other thing i think i did this we could actually print out just print out x itself Actually, I don't need to do it there. I can type it here, just X itself. It's going to give me, a, when it says columns, it's just the entry in the vector. So 2.5 was my initial guess. Second entry, 3.29. Okay, about 3.3, .3, like we said. 3.1098, dot, dot, dot. And that's closer. And basically by columns, by the sixth estimate, it's fit. It's not changing in any of the decimal places that we can see, just scanning down. All right, so, you know, X, this column five is X5 here. It's close within the first few decimal places, but there's still some action down towards the end. But then basically after that, sixth, seventh, eighth, the rest of the entries are, so the displayed accuracy, it's constant. There's action going on further down, but we don't see that. So we could actually change this n max to six and we would be getting the same level of, well, 
however many decimal places this is this accuracy. Um, so anything I want to think? Ah, uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> so you can see. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So that's just an example. All right. So let's say you don't have MATLAB. So what you can do, all this editing that I did, you could just do directly. Let me just copy this completely. And there's everything. Copy that. I could actually go to Octave, which make sure I've reconnected. I've already logged in. Uh, make sure I've reconnected. Uh, I could, let's say, make a new, create an empty file. Let's call it in our EG, Newton Raphson if example dot M. Uh, here we go. Okay, so this is the same code. Um, so I could have done all my editing in this window. Instead, made sure I saved it before I ran. So for MATLAB itself, you don't need to hit save then run. But for Octave, you do. It's just how it goes. So here's here the disk and I run. Oh, 3.0962, ah, all right. And so I've already truncated my, my estimates <clears throat> so that this is the this is the MATLAB code. You see the dots, the different sizes. You know, it's just a formatting thing. Um, but my answer here is still truncated. So what I can do is I can turn on um, format on G, save that and run. Okay, so now I get this like super accurate. And now let me just pull down this and max down to six because I saw just empirically by by looking at the entries of X. Let's scroll up a bit. Look, this is the this answer up at the top here. This is doing 10, 10 iterations. This is doing six iterations. Um so yeah. <clears throat> Anything else that I need to say? Um I could just print out X itself. Oh, I could, so this little box down here is the equivalent of the um, live command window. So here it doesn't say column one, column two, what have you. It just gives me the entry. So 2.5, my initial guess, roughly 2.3, oh, sorry, 3.3. That's the first iteration, 3.1, 3.096. Okay, and so after just a few steps, because I made a reasonable, and I sort of gave it a bit of thought, made a reasonable first guess, this converged pretty quickly. So it might help to um, do a plot in whatever way you like, any online or calculator software, do a quick plot of the function and just eyeball where you think the zero um, or the root uh, might be that you're interested in. <clears throat> and just make a, like a, a guess to the closest integer or maybe like, you know, I said 2.5 because I thought maybe it's between two and three. So that's, and that was good enough. So maybe, um, well, I'm here. Let me just play around, right? Let's, let's say I'd guessed two and I want to make my N max a bit bigger because maybe two is not a good guess. So let's save that. Okay. So, right. I mean, it gives me the same, gives me the same estimate, but it has to jump around a bit more, right? Instead of getting there basically within two ish, three steps, and then just some fine tuning, it's had to do one, two, three, four, and then it's kind of getting more accurate by about the fifth step. Um, I could have just said, look, uh, take it to be zero. Who knows? Save that and run it. It's like, whoa, okay. So what's happened here is it's, I've guessed badly. And so, well, relatively badly, it has to start at zero and it moves around a bit and it's trying to track to where the actual route is and eventually it gets there and again, 3.096, et cetera, et cetera. So even a reasonably bad guess <coughs> um, can get you there. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's, that's just some things that you can do. And I encourage you to just play around with the parameters and see uh, what if I guessed 
you know, stupidly bad. Let's say x1 is 10. I'm just curious now. All right, so it, it, it can still converges pretty quickly. Um, let's go really silly. Let's pretend I had no clue about mathematics. And I said, let's say 50 is my guess for the solution. All right, well, it gets there still pretty quickly, right? It's coming down, it's coming down, it's coming down. Okay, by about 10 entries, it's close. And then maybe it's just sort of just a few decimal places in the last, the next few. And then it's pretty much constant. Again, like it keeps giving me the same answer to this, this level of accuracy. So it's fairly forgiving as long as your function is not too weird. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I don't even know what the graph of this function looks like. You know, we could plot that. Uh, well, why not? I'm just going to go to GeoGebra. Uh, why not? Here's a free online graphics calculator. Uh, y equals the function, plots it straight away. All right, and there's our trusty solution. It's about three. And this is what the way. So it, it, this, this uh, function in, turned out to have uh, a single root. In principle, it could have been that this had three roots and I was sort of struggling to find, maybe I'd find different ones, but you know, I did, didn't uh, graph it first. <clears throat> but there you go. Um, and that's probably why when I'm sort of just plugging in all kinds of random values, it keeps giving me the same. Now, this is not a surefire test, but why not, you know, <clears throat> plug in a few initial guesses and they will keep uh, they in a range and they converge to the same thing. If they converge to different things, you know you've got more than one range. Um, yeah, anyway, there's some things you can play with. So GeoGebra.org, it's a good free graphics calculator. Octave is good fun.